purpose of this video is to derive an equation for phi angle. But um, my explanation previously is not strong yet, okay? Because I said that the phi angle determines the unknown forces that may actually prevent the forcing function, that, that may actually reduce the amount of force in the, for, from the forcing function. So therefore, it is. So therefore, the unknown forces are, I don't know. So therefore, and now I realize that it is actually the damping fact. This is actually the amount of damping, damping from the damper. So if the damper is much, is the damping factor. If the damping factor of the damper is large, the phi angle will be large. Okay. So as using this graph, the blue color one is when there is no damper. Okay. And then if you have larger damper, the phi the the phi angle will increase, right? And therefore, the the lagging itself happens. Okay, the lagging itself, as as they say, as we say earlier, is the displacement um factor. So what is this displacement? The displacement is actually the x. Okay, is actually the x over here. Okay, this this x distance. So if you have no damper, okay, imagine this damper is not here. You if you have a forcing function. You you put it down and you and you and you start to for, not put it down but rather when you um add upon the forcing function you start to oscillate and chop and chop and chop right so you oscillate in in this in this um momentum so the amount of x motion is kind of um large right but however if you imp input the damper itself so I mean sorry sorry before I say that okay so if there is no damper this is the angle in the blue color line. Okay. However, now let's take a look. So if there is a damper, if there is an increase in the so if there is a damping factor, okay, in the damper itself, so that means the damper is now usable. Okay, there is some damper damping effect. The amount of X oxidation is lower, right? So the, the more you have damper, the more it will the, the lesser it oxidates. Right? The lesser it oxidates. So we don't want, so therefore, um, since the lesser you oscillate, the amount of displacement will also be, um, you know, much, um, lagging behind the amount of forces. So if you were to ask me what is this plot, this is, uh, plotting against T, while this one I think is the amount of, um, um, I also don't know, like, <laughs> I may be wrong, I may, I can, uh, okay, anyway, <laughs> this, this will be very long, but anyway, so this this axis I will believe it's force, okay, the force of the forcing function. Okay, the force of the forcing function is always the same, okay, throughout. Just that um because of the um because of the damper itself, the, the forcing function um so called like the displacement lag behind. Anyway, so let's don't let's don't explain that. Okay, let's don't explain this part. Okay, but you you understand the relationship between the the, the damper and the and the forcing function and the displacement x itself. So as you you have a so therefore you have a rough understanding of what is actually the phi angle. And if you were to take a look to 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 solve for the equation of for phi, you you'll find that um this this is actually from the polygon vector polygon, okay. And you take this portion over here and then you analyze. So this angle is actually the phi. It's the relationship between the kx the spring minus the acceler the acceleration of the body okay and then this this relationship can be compared with the damping factor okay so it's a little complex so hold on. so i've mentioned previously from the from the vector view okay the the kx itself it's is in the same um angle phase okay omega omega t minus um phi angle um you know so they are in the same same situation so this this kx minus away this have some residual energy, right? So this energy, the the amount of energy depends greatly on the amount of damping, damping effect. Okay, so this is the damping. This is the acceleration. This portion is the spring constant. And you may ask, what is this? Okay, I also don't know. So hold on. Okay, <laughs> this is the forcing function. Okay, yeah, force. Okay. So the, the forcing function and the damper itself they are actually in the same same system. Okay, as you can see they are in, in you know in line. Although okay not in line, sorry. Um okay let's let's ignore that. Okay, <laughs> they're not in line. However, Kx and the 
the acceleration of the body they are actually um, in line they're actually in the same phase I mean yeah same phase because they use the same phase angle I mean yeah <laughs> anyway so um the back here you may wonder um omega square x m comes from where right the, the, this coefficient this coefficient all comes from the um the equations that we have just derived earlier okay if you remember okay you I think you you understand how we come from here and then you have this trial function you differentiate two times and then you sub back in over here and then this and then when you sub in and expand the coefficients comes from all this okay so this is just so this acceleration comes from the the very first part okay mass time acceleration that's the robot okay, and then you, you you bring everything forward and then you divide the whole equation by m so we're left with this so this is actually the acceleration of the body itself so I have talked so much about the the thing okay so therefore um the the larger the damping forces the if this increase okay if this 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 magnitude increase so if you increase you increase this magnitude to over here typically you know that um, you actually affect the amount of um you know um acceleration and the kx so the difference between these two will actually become smaller okay so so perhaps it may be in in this manner so therefore the angle itself will also be be larger right because a steeper one so you will have a a much larger phi angle sorry so when you slowly slowly get until this point okay when you, when you the, the smaller gap it is okay imagine you are going into 90 degrees so in other words the difference between the kx and the acceleration itself can can be related to the um the spring the distance moved okay so the damping the the more the damper the the less it oscillates right the less it oscillates you oscillate lesser and lesser right so therefore um this this explains the meaning behind that so therefore the the, the larger the damping factor the phi angle increases okay the phi angle increases and therefore the larger the lag the larger the lag so the larger the phi angle like behind the the without damper co com comparison I would say it's just okay I know it has been so yeah so therefore um, with this uh, let's prove okay let's prove um, using trigonom trigonometry okay we know that this is opposite this is opposite over adjacent uh, adjacent <coughs> so opposite over adjacent you have the um, tangent if you remember Okay, I'm not gonna go go through trigonometry, but <coughs> the tangent um phi will be equals to <coughs> sorry this one divided by this one right so hold on a while so they so this is what I have so so in so they have the same common term x right so I just um factor right factor them out okay so as you can see they are the same x so I just factor x. And then the next step is to cancel off the x, okay, the axis. You may seem it may seem that this is a pretty short um you know deriv derivation, but you need to really have some skills to derive. So I have no skill, so I copy. But um I realize um the the key thing to it is actually k. Okay, try try to or oh, when you see k alone, okay, you just see k alone you have to let's say you see k itself you have to k k uh, okay just you know like ko you know you have to k you have to destroy it <laughs> so i don't know i don't know whether it is for every case but for this case um i divide i i try to you know make this k gone okay so how do i do that um so uh i actually divide the whole equation by k okay so this one become so um okay hold on so this will become k, I mean divided by k, divided by k, divided by k, okay. So, so, um, you get what I mean? So, if you divide the whole function by k, you will have, have this, this thing over here as shown. Right. And then, simply say that, um, the c itself is a damping coefficient, right? We can expand using the, the damping 
thing from your data sheet. You can straight away the take from the data sheet. Um, from the very first this part, I don't know where is it. Um, yeah, over here. Okay, so you just take this relationship. So as I say, you need to memorize all these things. You have to articulate it well. So C is equals to um two m omega n times the damping factor. Okay, so this is equals to this, right? So you just bring this up. You get this, and this is equivalent to this. That's what I mean. Okay, and therefore, uh, and then if you were to so yeah, this is this, and then after that you divide the whole equation by k. Okay, and then um, okay now hold on, and you will see that the um the relationship okay from here it's m and k. So as you can see um, using the natural frequency um rule, so m m divided by k is actually one over omega, and if you bring this this dude over here now, so it will be like one over over omega n square. So this explain why I have one over omega n square here. While the m is gone, okay, there's no m over here. So um, yeah, so the two damping factor, natural frequency, and then this thing I didn't change. So only change is the m over k. I change it to one over omega square. So um, nonetheless, uh, for the um, denominator, m okay, m okay, m m over k is also using this this method. So we have two one over uh, omega n square over here. So this is this, and this is this. And one minus, you know, two k over k is equals to one. So I just simplify them, and then we're knowing that beta is equals to the um, the 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 frequency of the damping frequency divided by um, the natural frequency, or nonetheless is the frequency rate. You have uh, this equation. So simply say that uh, this this whole thing, okay, um, okay, hold on. So, so this one cancel away the square. So omega divided by omega n, what is it? Or oh, the beta, right? And then for this case, um, omega square divided by omega n square, you will have beta square. So this is the, I think that in test, they may actually call you to derive this. This is quite short, but it is pretty tricky. So you have to know which to divide. Because, um, yeah, eventually you may actually confuse yourself. So I so this 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 thing defines the phi, phi angle for our for our leg okay for our x the x distance. So I I think I I've made the the limits for this time. So I'll just do so next video I'll just do a video on on the um this thing okay. So you you know as a as a design engineer you have to know um when will it. When when is the most critical portion you need to really take? So see you.